April 28, 2012 through April 27 of 2013 involving victim D. This again alleges engaging in sexual penetration described as finger into a genital opening with a child who was at least 13 but less than 16 years of age and you were in a position of authority over the victim and used this authority to coerce the victim to submit by exerting your authoritative position. Criminal sexual conduct in the first degree under these circumstances is a felony punishable by any number of years up to life with mandatory lifetime electronic monitoring. Count nine, criminal sexual conduct in the third degree with a person aged 13 to 15. This is charged as an alternative to count eight. In other words, the prosecutor, the attorney general is not seeking to convict you of both eight and nine, it's rather eight or nine. In this, in this count, the attorney general charges that in the time period April 28 of 2012 through April 27 of 2013 at 4660 Hagedorn in East Lansing with victim D, that you did engage in sexual penetration described as finger inserted into a genital opening with a child who was at least 13 years of age but under 16 years of age. Uh, charged as criminal sexual conduct in the third degree, this is a felony punishable by up to 15 years in prison. Uh, incidentally, so the record is clear, all of these are Sex Offender Registration Act offenses. Now, count 10 charges criminal sexual conduct again in the first degree based on a relationship status. Uh, in the time period January 1 of 2013 through April 27 of 2015, at the location described as 4660 Hagedorn in East Lansing with victim E. The allegation is that you did engage in sexual penetration described as finger into a genital opening with a child who was at least 13 but less than 16 years of age and you were in a position of authority over that victim and used your authority to coerce the victim to submit by exerting your authoritative position. Again, this is charged as criminal sexual conduct in the first degree. The penalty is any number of years up to life in prison with mandatory lifetime electronic monitoring. Count 11, criminal sexual conduct in the third degree as an alternative to count 10. Uh, again, as in the previous uh, case with count 9, this is uh, charged with respect to victim E in the same time period. It is considered an alternative to count 10. And the possible penalty for this offense is any number of years up to 15 in prison with mandatory AIDS STD testing. Uh, count 12. Again, we're back to criminal sexual conduct in the first degree based on a relationship status. In the time period December 14 of 2008 through December 13 of 2011 at 4660 South Hagedorn in East Lansing concerning victim F, as in Frank, that you did engage in sexual penetration described as finger into a genital opening with a child who was at least 13 but less than 16 years of age and uh, you, the defendant, were in a position of authority over the victim and used your authority to coerce the victim to submit by exerting your authoritative position. Uh, again, this is considered criminal sexual conduct in the first degree. It is a uh, felony punishable by up to life in prison with mandatory lifetime electronic monitoring. Criminal sexual co uh, count 13 alleges criminal sexual conduct in the third degree as an alternative to count 12. And again, uh, the difference here is the Attorney General is not alleging that you utilized a position of authority to accomplish the, the criminal assault. It is otherwise the same as count 12. Count 14, criminal sexual conduct in the first degree based on a relationship status for the time period December 14, 2008 through and including December 13 of 2011 at 4660 South Hagedorn in East Lansing concerning victim F. This again is based on the use of authoritative position uh, as previously stated in the other counts. It is again a first degree felony punishable by up to life in prison with mandatory electronic monitoring. Count 15 is charged again as an alternative to count 14. It is criminal sexual conduct in the third degree for the same time period, same location with victim F. Count 16, charges criminal sexual conduct in the first degree based on your relationship status, again with victim F. 
the time period covered is December 14 of 2008 through and including December 13 of 2011 at 4660 Hagedorn, again involving victim F as in Frank. Uh, that you did engage in sexual penetration, described as finger to an anal opening of a child who was at least 13 but less than 16 years of age, and you used your position of authority over the victim and used this authority to coerce the victim to submit by exerting your authoritative position. Count 16 is a felony punishable by up to life in prison with mandatory electronic monitoring. Count 17 charges criminal sexual conduct in the third degree with the victim between 13 and 15 years of age. Again, uh, this charge covers the time period December 14 of 08 through and including December 13 of 2011 at the location of 4660 South Hagedorn in East Lansing, victim F as in Frank. The allegation here is that the sexual penetration is described as finger into the anal opening of a child who was at least 13 years of age but under 16. Criminal sexual conduct in the third degree here is a felony punishable by up to 15 years in prison. Count 18 charges criminal sexual conduct in the first degree based on relationship status. This covers the time period April 26 of 2008 through and including April 25 of 2011 at a location described as 2255 Tiffany Lane in Holt, Michigan involving victim G as in George. The allegation here is that you did engage in sexual penetration described as finger into a genital opening with a child who was at least 13 but less than 16 years of age and you, the defendant, were in a position of authority over the victim and used your authority to coerce the victim to submit by exerting your authoritative position. Again, we're back to first degree criminal sexual conduct. It is a felony punishable by any number of years up to life in prison with mandatory lifetime electronic monitoring. Count 19 charges criminal sexual conduct in the third degree over the same circumstances. Uh, 2255 Tiffany Lane, the same date period with victim G. Count 19 as an alternative to count 18 is a felony, uh, criminal sexual conduct in the third degree, a 15 year felony. Count 20 charges first degree criminal sexual conduct involving victim G for the time period April 26, 2008 through April 25, 2011. And again, it is at the location of 4660 South Hagedorn in East Lansing. Here it is described as engaging in sexual penetration, described as finger into a genital opening of a child who was at least 13 but less than 16 years of age, and you were in a position of authority over the victim and used your authority to coerce the victim to submit uh, by exerting your authoritative position. Again, as a first degree criminal sexual conduct charge, this is a felony punishable by any number of years up to life in prison. Count 21, criminal sexual conduct in the third degree as an alternative to count 20. The same date and time, same location, South Hagedorn with victim G. Uh, this is criminal sexual conduct in the third degree because it alleges criminal sexual penetration into a genital opening, but does not uh, allege misuse of authority over the victim. Count 22, criminal sexual conduct in the first degree based on relationship status. Uh, in the time period April 26, 2008 through and including April 25, 2011 at 4660 South Hagedorn in East Lansing with victim G. Uh, the, the Attorney General has alleged in this count that you did engage in sexual penetration described as finger inserted into an anal opening of the child who was at least 13 but less than 16 and you used a position of authority over the victim to coerce the victim into uh, submitting by exerting your authoritative position. Again, this is a first degree criminal sexual conduct charge. It is a felony punishable by up to life in prison with mandatory lifetime electronic monitoring. And the last count alleged by the Attorney General is count 23, which is charged as an alternative to count 22, covering the same date and time period at the same location with victim G. Again, it is an allegation that you did engage in sexual penetration by inserting a finger into an anal opening of a child who was at least 13 years of age but under 16, it does not allege abuse of authority over the victim, uh, and therefore it is criminal sexual conduct in the third degree, a felony punishable by up to 15 years in prison. 
Those are all of the counts alleged by the Attorney General. Now, Dr. Nasser, you have certain legal rights that automatically come to you when you're charged with offenses like this. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say about your case could be used against you in court, but if you remain silent, that's a privilege protected by the Constitution. That means that no one's allowed to draw any conclusions from your silence and the prosecutor is not allowed to comment about your silence. You have the right to be presumed innocent until the prosecutor proves the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt and if this matter goes to trial, you have the right to demand a jury trial. You have the right to present witnesses for your own defense and use the subpoena power of the court to compel those witnesses to appear for you. And you have the right to confront and cross-examine all prosecution witnesses. You have the right, if you choose, to testify on your own behalf, but no one can force you to do that. It is exclusively your choice. If you do choose to testify, you'll be treated like any other witness. Lastly, sir, you have the right to be represented by counsel. It's my understanding that you have three very competent attorneys who are representing you, so that matter's been covered. Let's talk about where this case is going in this court. Uh, as with your previous case here, this case has been assigned to Judge Donald Allen. I'm sitting in his seat right now. We have two dates for you currently. It's my understanding from discussions with counsel before we went on the record that these dates will probably change, but right now I'm going to leave them as they are stated. The first date is a pre-exam conference on Thursday, March 2, at 8.30 in the morning. That pre-exam conference, that's an opportunity for your attorneys to meet with Judge Allen and with the Attorney General's uh, officials to discuss the future progress of this case and see if any agreements can be worked out. It's my, my understanding that at that time, your attorneys will ask the judge to adjourn based on overwhelming discovery, uh, but that's up to Judge Allen, and he'll consider that issue when he hears the matter brought up. But that will be the first uh, pre-exam conference on this. We currently have the preliminary examination scheduled for Thursday, March 9, at 9.30 in the morning. In all honesty, I'd be stunned if that date is held too, but we'll, we've got it on the record, so we'll, we'll start with that. The preliminary examination, as you know, is a hearing that is always scheduled in felony cases. The purpose of that hearing is for the Attorney General to present evidence to, to the uh, court in the effort to prove two things with respect to these various charges I just read. The first is probable cause to believe that they, they or others are true, exist. And the second is probable cause to believe that you are the person responsible for these events. Please understand, it is not beyond a reasonable doubt that standard of proof is only used at the trial. Probable cause in real life to you means pretty much what it sounds like, that it probably happened and you probably did it. If Judge Allen makes those findings after considering the Attorney General's evidence, then he's going to forward this case to the Circuit Court, court for further proceedings. The circuit Court is where you have your right to have a jury trial. Until that date, however, I have to set a bond for you, sir. Um, it's my understanding from news media that you are being held without bond under federal authority. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Um, let's hear from the Attorney General on the issue of bond for these new charges. Thank you, Your Honor. Briefly, um, it is correct that uh, the defendant is being held without bond in this federal case. His uh, bond was also uh, both on the state case, that matter, which was bound over on Friday. Um, at the preliminary exam. So, Your Honor, in this case, the people will request that this court deny uh, pretrial release pursuant to the court rule, which is MCR 6.106, which do does allow for uh, denial of pretrial release based on the defendant being charged uh, with uh, criminal sexual conduct in first degree and in light of the fact that his bond has been revoked on his other criminal matters. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Black? And, Your Honor, we would leave the matter of bond to the discretion of the court. Thank you. Right. The Attorney General has cited me to a rule known as Michigan Court Rule 6.106, in particular Rule B1 sub B, which provides a defendant charged with criminal sexual conduct in the first degree, armed robbery or kidnapping, may be denied bond. Uh, based on the fact that the defendant is already being held in custody without bond, I don't see that it imposes an additional a significant burden on his freedom, and I believe the court rule is properly applied here. I'm going to issue a no bond order for the defendant for the further review of this case by Judge Allen. Thank you, Your Honor. Counsel, either counsel, anything further for the record? Nothing further from the people, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, I believe we've yet to enter his um, ask the court to set his plea to be that of not guilty. Oh, I did that automatically. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. 
Just wanted to make sure it was clear. All right, folks, thank you very much. We're going off the road. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor.